Hi, this is Emily Bowen Moore. This is Journalism 273 at the Meek School of Journalism and New Media at the University of Mississippi. And this tutorial is an orientation to the interface for InDesign CC. And I have got the document open. I've got two, actually. Um, when you open CC <clears throat> or InDesign, this is basically what the interface is going to look like. The new CC is uh, the new version, and it's a dark to medium gray. The older versions were automatically a lighter design. Um, and you can actually change those preferences in InDesign CC up in the main menu at the very, very top of your screen. Uh, you may not be able to see it in the video, but it is the very top, top menu on your computer. You can go to interface and it brings up a screen and you can customize and change um, that. So if you wanted a lighter interface, you could do that. I particularly like it darker. You can also change the guides. Um, so if I have mar my margin lines, they're in magenta. You could change that to whatever color you would like. So um, it's helpful and it allows you to customize. Um, and this <clears throat> whole interface here is it looks like a lot of things that are different but they're actually most of them are similar options they're just in multiple locations and again it's to allow you to customize your interface and your workspace which is very helpful in the professional arena so let's look at what's on this interface here if I go to the left those are my tools that I can use um, we'll get to more into the individual tools and other tutorials. I'm just going to kind of just go over all of the things that are in your interface in this tutorial. Um, now you can customize where you want to put this. If you want to take it off the side and have it closer to what you're working on, you're welcome to do that. You can pull that out. You can also have separate views, a horizontal view or a double column view. So you've got different things you can do with that. Uh, if you want to put it back to the side, if you carry it over to the edge until it turns blue, you'll see a little blue line pop up, then it will go back to the side. And you can do that with these things on the right. This is your windows. And these are options that relate to the tools that you're using as well. So if, for instance, if I go to the type tool, you'll see that this panel changes at the top. Those give me options for the tools that I'm using in particular. If I switch back to my selection tool, then I've got my options here again. For instance, <clears throat> the color here are my fill. If I'm creating an object, I can fill it here. I can also adjust the stroke, which is the outline, and it gives me all the options here. Cut my effects, transparency or opacity, uh, text wrapping. So you have options there with your selection tool. So whatever tools you're using will give you different options that relate. So in my type tool, you'll see my type options here. Here are my alignment options. I've got the name of the typeface, the style, the size, the letting or line spacing. And you've got other options here, uh, such as all caps, and underline and if you notice when I scroll over a tool it will let me know what those are same with these tools over here and it allows me to know my shortcuts as well um, so these are shortcuts that are in InDesign so you really don't have to some of these you'll uh, put you know hit the command key before but some of them you don't these you do not if I go back over here to my windows on the right, if I go to my character window, see it gives me these same options as I have up here. In paragraph, they're also there. My alignment, which are above here. So you have all the multiple locations uh, for your options and tools. And same as on the left side with your tools, you can minimize these to just the icon view you can expand this. Um, you can open all of them at once, <laughs> which is, gets very cluttered. 
um, but they are a lot larger and easier to see. So it depends on what your preference is, um, whatever you like. And you can save this workspace. Up here at the very top, if I go and click where it says Essentials, um, that's usually the default. It has several um, that are default here, but you can save your workspace um, however you would like. You can just allow your, you know, your windows that you want open and visible and have your tools and everything viewable however you want to customize that and you can save that under start a new workspace under whatever name you would like. So that's very helpful as well. You have this ruler here that also is helpful when you want to pull guides um, and align things. So you can make that visible or invisible by pressing Command R. And the units are usually in picas. And you can, if you want to change that to inches, you can go over to the corner and hold down the control button and click. And you can put it on whatever units you would like. I have it on inches, so I'm going to leave it there. And at the bottom of this interface, you will see um, you can go to, we only have one page here, so it's only showing one. If you were doing a multiple page document, you could scroll from whatever page to page you would like. Um, if it were a book or a publication of some sort. So here we have our pre-flight profile, which is basically uh, allows us to see if there are any errors. And if we double click on this, it opens the pre-flight window. And right now, it's showing no errors. And an error might be overset type, it might be missing links, it might be missing fonts. Um, you might be using a bold style font that may not be actually downloaded on your particular computer. Um, so when it has an error or doesn't recognize a link or something like that um, in the document that you are working on, then it will allow you to see that in your error pre-flight window. And it will turn red if you have errors. Uh, so all you have to do is open that up and it will list. And also it will have a little number here. And if you click on that number, um, it will show you exactly in the document where that error is. So you want to look out for errors before you save your work and turn it in. Alright, so this is basically the interface here. Um, I would like for you to, to be able to get comfortable and be able to uh, navigate easily um, so and not have it be intimidating. I don't want you inhibited about approaching this part of the work. Um, and this allows you here to work on multiple object or objects and <laughs> documents at once. And to start a document, if you go to the top, top menu, you can go to File, New, and Document. And it'll bring up a screen where you can customize your and the setup of your document. Whether it's for print, web, mobile, usually what we will be doing, using it for is print. Let's say you have two pages. Uh, we're going to click facing pages. Uh, that means they're going to be side by side. And we'll start with page two to make sure it's on the left side here. And if this is letter size, it's set in picas. If you ever want to customize, say we want to make this five inches, then we could punch in five, and then the dumb quotes, the double quotes like when you're using height. Um, so five inches and that will convert into picas for you. It automatically does that which is very helpful. Um, I want to add some guides here so I'm going to add six columns to help me align things. Your gutter is going to be the space between those columns so I'm going to leave that at one pica. Uh, 
my text margins are set at a half inch. I would like to make my side margins a little smaller. So in order to customize and make them individual, I'm going to click this button here to um, adjust the inside and outside margins. I want those to be a little smaller. And I'm going to add a bleed margin. This allows me to, if I want to bleed color or imagery off the page, I need to set up a bleed margin so that it doesn't get cut off awkwardly. So I usually do that at least an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to do a quarter of an inch. And I want these all to be the same, so I'm going to click that link button again to make them all the same. I'm going to hit OK. Now we're in print preview mode which we don't want to work in print preview mode. We just want to check every now and then to see what it looks like in print. So if I click W, which is our shortcut, and this is in your tool panel, this goes back to normal mode. If I open this little window here, you've got all your different viewable modes here. So this is normal. Print preview allows us to see what it would look like when it's printed. And if I hit W again, it goes back. So now we have our page. Our text margin here is in the magenta. So that's a half inch and then two pikas nine points on the sides and, or inside and outside margins. I have facing pages, so it's two pages side by side. And then I have the edge of the paper here, which is the black. And then I have the bleed margin, which is the red. So you want all your text to stay inside the text margin. And if you bleed anything to the edge of the paper, you need to go ahead and take it to the bleed margin so that it doesn't get cut off when printed in bulk. So that's setting up a document. Like I said, you have multiple, you can align multiple objects and uh, documents, I'm sorry, when you have them set up. You can go from one to the other if you're working on projects um, at the same time. Okay, so that should get you started. Um, I hope you enjoy exploring some of these tools. Um, and to get more information, uh, more information on these tools, you can go to the other tutorials. Um, they're very helpful, hopefully. Um, so thanks for listening, and see you in class.